All right, everybody, buckle up because today we are going deep on Tesla's Cybertruck. It's a vehicle that's got people talking like no other, that's for sure. It's futuristic, it's polarizing, and honestly, it looks like it drove right off the set of a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? It really does. But is it really like a revolution on wheels? Or is this all just hype? That's what we're here to figure out today. We're going to get past those memes and headlines and really dissect the Cybertruck from those wild specs it has to those, uh, let's say, interesting recalls. Right, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. What I find really fascinating about the Cybertruck is it's not just a vehicle, right? It's like this whole cultural phenomenon. Yeah, absolutely. And just the design alone has sparked like endless conversations. But I think we need to look beyond just like how it looks, you know, and ask, does the Cybertruck actually deliver on what it promises? Especially when it comes to, you know, the practical stuff, like actually being a truck. And when we talk about practicalities, I think, well, we got to address this, uh, the elephant in the room, right? The Cybertruck's weight. I yeah. mean, we are talking about almost 7,000 pounds for the all-wheel drive, just to put that in perspective. Mm -hmm. That is heavier than some SUVs out there. So yeah. that is a lot of weight riding on those, uh, those futuristic wheels. Yeah, you're not kidding. And that weight is a great example of where those, you know, eye-catching specs turn into real-world issues. Like a heavier vehicle, it's going to take longer to stop. That's just physics. And if you get into a crash, well, it's more dangerous, not just for the Cybertruck itself, but obviously, you know, whatever it hits. And then on top of that, think about trying to actually drive something that big around, especially like in a city or on a tight off-road trail. These are all things people looking at the Cybertruck, especially those who like the idea of, you know, taking it off-roaring. They got to consider that. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of real world challenges, the Cybertruck's already had uh, a couple of recalls. Mm -hmm. And one in particular, this might make you laugh, mm -hmm. this vehicle, this vehicle built for the apocalypse was, get this, defeated by, wait for rain. It's kind of funny when you put it like that. This super truck taken down by, well, just a little rain. But uh, when you dig a little deeper, it's actually, you know, not really a laughing matter. So the recall, it was issued because of problems with the windshield wipers failing. Now, that might seem like a small thing, windshield wipers, but it could have some really bad consequences. Mm. I mean, imagine you're driving the Cybertruck, mm. right? Heavy rain, maybe off-road, and boom, you can't see anything. Not exactly what you want from a vehicle that's supposed to be, you know, all about durability and adventure. No, not at all. And on top of the wipers, there was another recall, and this one was because the trim... The trim on the car, it could actually detach when you're driving at higher speeds. Yeah. I'll admit, when I first heard that, I was just like, really? The trim? But then you start to think about it, and, well, especially with a vehicle as heavy as the Cybertruck. Yeah, I know what you mean. That trim becomes a projectile. Exactly. It doesn't matter how futuristic your car looks. Something like that, a loose panel at speed, that's dangerous. And it makes you wonder about you know, the quality control over there. Like, if they're having issues like this, what other problems might pop up down the line? Right, and, you know, this isn't Tesla's first time having to issue recalls. I mean, they've had their share of issues with older models, like, remember the Model X, those Holocaust wing doors had some problems. So it makes you wonder, are these recalls with the Cybertruck just, like, growing pains for a company that's trying to, you know, really push the boundaries of what's possible? Yeah, are they cutting corners to get this thing out there? Or is there something else going on? Is this a pattern? Well, that is the million dollar question, isn't it? Tesla's always been known for wanting to do things big and fast. Mm -hmm. But are they moving so fast that they're sacrificing quality? I mean, on the other hand, we got to be fair. They usually do fix the problems they have. But the Cybertruck, it's so different from anything else out there. It's like a whole new ball game. It really is. And, you know, speaking of Tesla pushing the boundaries... <laughs> We can't forget about the fan base they've cultivated. It's incredible. I mean, these are people who will wait in line for days just to be the first to get a new Tesla. They really, really love the brand. So do you think that this Tesla effect, do you think that's enough to make people overlook these early problems with the Cybertruck? Oh, that's interesting. The loyalty of Tesla owners, it's undeniable. It gives them a lot more leeway than other car companies could ever dream of. And yeah, when you really believe in a company's vision, you're probably more likely to forgive a mistake or two but, you know, there's always another side to that coin. We'll be diving into that right after this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more on the Tesla Cybertruck. So we were talking about Tesla's loyal fan base and how that might, uh, how that might affect how people see the Cybertruck and the issues it's having. Right, right. And as I was saying, that loyalty, as great as it is for Tesla, it can also backfire a little bit. How so? Well, it's kind of like... Um, 
It's like when you love a band so much, you're willing to overlook a not so great album they put out. You know? Yeah, I get it. It's the same idea with Tesla, I think. Those fans are so passionate, they might just ignore some of these problems. Maybe even problems that, you know, are actually pretty serious. And that could end up hurting Tesla in the long run. Yeah. It's a tough spot for Tesla, really. Yeah. On the one hand, you've got this amazing, excited fan base. Yeah. But then you also have to make sure you're making a good, reliable vehicle, right? Absolutely. And it's not just about meeting expectations anymore, especially for a company like Tesla that's really trying to, you know, change the game. They got to exceed those expectations. And they set the bar pretty high with the Cybertruck. I mean, they promised a lot. Yeah. Near indestructible, amazing performance, incredible range. It's a lot to live up to. Oh, and we can't forget about the environmental aspect of it all. Tesla's always saying they're leading the way in electric vehicles. And yeah. Cybertruck, well, it's supposed to be a big part of that. Yeah. Sustainable transportation and all that. But how sustainable is it really if it's having all these problems? I mean, if it needs constant repairs, isn't that kind of bad for the environment anyway? That's a really good point. Yeah, the environmental impact of a vehicle, it's not just about the emissions, right? You got to think about how it's made, the materials they use, how long it lasts. If the Cybertruck ends up needing a lot of repairs or if they have to replace parts all the time, well, it kind of negates the whole, you know, eco-friendly thing they've got going on. It's like you were saying before, the details really matter. It's not enough to just like make big promises. You got to actually deliver on them. You got to make sure it works long term. Exactly. It's about finding that balance between being excited about the future, no. but also being realistic about, you know, the potential problems. So what can people do? If you're thinking about the Cybertruck, I mean, mm -hmm. how do you weigh all of this? I think it's about being informed, really. Don't just get caught up in all the hype. Do your research. Exactly. We have more information available to us now than ever before. You know, read reviews, compare different vehicles. Don't be afraid to ask tough questions. Hold Tesla accountable. Yes. Don't just take their word for it. Look into it yourself. And maybe, you know, maybe don't worry too much about those windows shattering at the unveiling. Yeah, maybe let that one go. But seriously, the Cybertruck, it's just the beginning of its story. Definitely. Right? It's going to be fascinating to see how it all plays out. Will... Tesla fix these problems? Will the Cybertruck actually live up to the hype? It's an exciting time, for sure. And it's something we'll definitely be keeping an eye on. But for now, let's shift gears a bit. Let's talk about how the Cybertruck might change the car industry as a whole. Okay, yeah, now that is a big question. We're back. And for the last part of our Cybertruck deep dive, let's zoom out a bit, look at the big picture. Yeah, it's easy to get caught up in the details with this one, but the Cybertruck, it's bigger than just, you know, one vehicle. It could really shake up the whole car industry. I mean, it's definitely different. It's not just the looks either. Right. The electric powertrain. That's huge, too. Exactly. Tesla's basically challenging every other car company out there. Yeah. Kind of like they did with electric cars in the first place. Yep. Exactly like that. Everyone else is still trying to catch up. Yeah. So you think... The Cybertruck, it could have that same impact on trucks. I think it could, yeah. Even if it just does. Like, okay, you know, not amazingly successful. It could still push other companies to make their own electric trucks faster. Right. No one wants to be left behind. Exactly. And it's not just about uh, electric versus gas anymore. Right. The Cybertruck, it's making everyone rethink what a truck can even look like. Totally. It's like when the Model S came out. I was just thinking about that. Remember how weird it seemed at first? Yeah, everyone was skeptical. An electric car, that'll never work. But now look, Tesla's on top. And yeah. almost every car company out there, they've got their own electric car now. That's what I'm saying. So maybe this Cybertruck, it's like the Model S of trucks. Maybe, maybe. It's definitely making people think differently about what they want in a truck. Yeah, like it's not just about being tough anymore. It's got to be sustainable too. All right, so... We've talked a lot about the problems the Cybertruck has. There have been a few. But what about the good stuff? Is there anything, like, genuinely exciting about it? I think so, yeah. At its core, the Cybertruck, it's a pretty bold idea. Okay, how so? It's like, here's what transportation could look like. Yeah. Electric, better for the environment, and potentially even more capable than the trucks we have now. If it works, I mean. Right, if it works. But that's the big question, isn't it? It really is. So what's the verdict then? Cybertruck. Good or bad? Honestly, it's way too early to tell. It's like a science experiment, you know? Oh. A really cool, really expensive science experiment. And a lot of people are watching how it turns out. For sure. 
Well, that about wraps it up for our Cybertruck deep dive. Wow. We've gone over a lot today. Yeah. The specs, the recalls, the hype, all of it. Hopefully you have a better idea of what this thing is all about now. It's a fascinating vehicle, that's for sure. It really is. And remember, folks, whether you love it or hate it, the Cybertruck, it's more than just a truck. It's a sign of things to come. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive.